Welcome to Burning Rubber with me, Tiff Needell. Over the next 60 minutes or so, I'm going to be taking you with me on board this mouth-watering lineup of machinery to rip the tyres from their rims and show you some of the tricks of the stunt driver's trade. You've seen me do most of them before, but now I'm going to show you just how they're done. Not only with rear-wheel drive, but also with front-wheel drive, four-wheel drive and V12 Jaguar drive. Of course, these aren't the sort of tricks you can do on public roads, but nowadays there are plenty of off-road events where you can have a go yourself on airfields like this one we're at today. The only problem is, it's going to be your rubber you're ripping to shreds. Me, I brought on a little friend to help me out. For starters, we're going on board a small family coupe, in which you may remember I took a couple of my mates for a spin a few years back. The Ford Puma. Let's start with the simplest stunt of them all, the handbrake turn. First gear, swing the wheel, pull the handbrake, get the clutch, and power out of it. Didn't you quite get that? Swing the wheel, hit the handbrake, get the clutch, and power out of it. Okay, just for you, in slow motion. Build up your speed in first gear, swing the wheel over sharply, yank the handbrake, the rear wheels will lock as the back end slides round. Dip the clutch to prevent the engine stalling. Now release the handbrake. Then it's foot down on the throttle and power out. The only thing you can really get wrong on a handbrake turn is to forget to hold the button in as you're doing it. If you do that, you end up trying to drag along locked rear wheels. So remember, unless you want more rubber on the road than round your alloys, keep the button in. Once you've mastered that, the slightly more difficult version is the 90 degree turn. Then you need a second gear, a nip, catch it, and then back on the power. Let's go through that again. Second gear this time, and as you approach the bend, just nip the handbrake, then release it as you turn in. Catch the slide with opposite lock, and then back on the power to pull the car straight. Now, although that may have looked easy, the problem is because you're going faster, if you pull the handbrake too sharply, you end up overshooting, and that's no good. It's simple. Go easy on the handbrake, or you'll end up looking at where you've just come from. Then, if you don't pull it sharp enough, You end up on the grass. Mm. 
Lots of space to run off if you make a mistake is a must. Then if you think you've got all that sussed, you can move on to the big stuff. The handbrake turn to go backwards and then follow that with a reverse flip. <laughs> So it's first, backwards, right, reverse, bring up the speed, flick, turn, grab first, and away. So that's a combination of the handbrake turn and the reverse flick. The reverse flick, you need lots of speed in reverse gear before that front will come round. As it comes round, you want to hit the foot brake, get the front wheel swinging back into first gear. It's all go, go, go. Once more. Handbrake, brakes, reverse gear, get up the speed, flick at the foot brake, ramp first, and de clutch. You must build up your speed before flicking the steering wheel and then pulling on the handbrake. Now grab reverse gear. Build up your speed. Then flick the wheel back the other way. And as the front swings round, hit the brake pedal to lock the front wheels. Now grab first gear, de-clutch and you can power away. The only problem with front wheel drive though is you can't really do power slides. All you get in high speed coring is understeer, understeer and more boring understeer. So to get it sideways without using the handbrake, you need to resort to the Scandinavian flick, followed by a, a bit of lift-off oversteer. Let me show you. Sort of like that. So we're doing about 65 miles an hour, 70. The thing is you've got to flick left and right, let the tail go right out, and then hammer the throttle to bring it straight. One more time. All right, just for you. Remember, the whole point of the Scandinavian flick is to unsettle the car, deliberately throw the weight to send it sideways, and then control the slide with opposite lock. In third, turn the wrong way into the corner, then quickly the right way. Let the tail slide out as far as you dare, then hit the throttle to pull the car out of the slide. So that's the handbrake turn. The 90 degree handbrake turn. The handbrake turn followed by reverse flick. and the Scandinavian flick, followed by lift-off oversteer. So, that's the basics. And now I'd like to introduce someone who's put those manoeuvres together into something of an art form. A former auto-test champion whose stunts have graced many a television commercial. Russ Swift.
As we've just seen, front-wheel drive cars are highly manoeuvrable, but they're not ideal for burning rubber in. What you really want is loads of horsepower, a limited slip differential and rear-wheel drive. Cue the best handling car in the business, the BMW M Roadster. We'll begin with the basics. The donut, everyone's favourite, a tyre smoking delight. Now, there are two ways of getting this started. First of all, from a static position, first gear, loads of lock on, loads of revs, and dump the clutch. And round it goes, instant donuts, instant joy. And if you're wondering why it's called a donut, just look at those black marks it leaves on the tarmac. So the ingredients for the perfect donuts every time are a standing start, full lock, loads of revs, dump the clutch, and voila, an instant donut. Now, that all looked a bit too easy. Well, we've got the rolling into it donut, which needs a little bit of tweak of the handbrake to get rid of any understeer. So now we'll come up, tweak the handbrake, and then we're into the donut. Now, donutting just a one little spot like this, well, it's a bit too easy, isn't it, really? that we need the power slide. Now we're into a wider radius and we've got to try and balance that throttle, balance the car with power and throttle. If you give it too much power, <laughs> you spin out. Too little power, and all of a sudden the, uh, the, the the tail will come straight again, and you won't be able to hold the slide. I'll just show how that happens now. We're happily power sliding, but too little power, and oh, it straightens up and goes the other way. So it's that beautiful balance between throttle power and steering, and it is just one of my favourite things to do. And this one even gets harder and harder the bigger the radius so you want to get more speed up go for the very wide radius it then becomes more of a fine balancing act we're doing about 50 miles an hour now and i'm getting right near the very edge of this large square and i'm enjoying it Power slides are a bit trickier than donuts, but then they are more fun too. With the car rolling and in second gear, hammer the throttle down for extra power 
and now you have to catch the slide with the steering, then balance the throttle in order to keep the slide going. Too much power and you'll spin. Too little and the rear will grip and the car will straighten up. But get it just right and you too can have fun like this. Once you've perfected the power sliding technique in a long wing wide circle, the next thing is to adapt that to a corner. Of course, you've got to make sure you don't go too over the top too soon. And the skill here is to try and finish with the car coming neatly straight, especially if you haven't got much road left on the outside. So again, we turn in hard, plant the throttle, get the back out, and then try and just sit there, feeding it out to the edge of the road without any tank slapper at the end. It's a question of just trying to feel when it's the right moment to lift off that throttle, ease the power, give the grip back to the rear wheels, which will, of course, straighten you up. Just at the moment you want to straighten the car. Otherwise, it's very embarrassing if you suddenly spear left. Once again, then, turn hard, get the back out, pick up the throttle. Now, power slide, power slide. But straighten up before you end up doing one of those. A good old-fashioned tank slapper. Very embarrassing. Again, this requires practice. Turn hard into a bend to get the back out. Then catch the slide. Now apply full throttle. Balance the car with the steering. And as the corner ends, feel the right moment to ease off the power to regain traction. And when you've mastered all that, it's time to take on the 360 Spin Challenge. <laughs> 70 miles an hour for this. Throw it left, right, and swing the wheel. The handbrake, hit the foot, brake, round, lower gear. And you've done it. All happened a bit fast for you? OK. Let's do it one more time. Third gear, up to about 70 miles an hour. And it's that need to flick it the wrong way first, like a rally driver. Wrong way, right way, swing, and flick the wheel, front way, get a lower gear, and accelerate out. The most important thing you need to do this manoeuvre is a nice wide area to practice in, like an airfield runway. Third gear at 70 miles an hour. Use the Scandinavian flick to upset the car. Grab the handbrake. Swing the lock the other way to bring the front round. Hit the foot brake to lock the front to bring that nose round even quicker. Grab a lower gear just before you straighten up and then accelerate out. It's a hectic few seconds. But the result is worth it. It's easy when you know how. Let's recap. The donut. The power slide. The power slide through a bend and the spectacular 360-degree spin. But of course, you don't have to have a BMW to have some fun. You can even burn rubber in a transit van.
So what else could I burn rubber in? Maybe a Reliant Robin. This little plastic tripod should provide some fun. Or perhaps not. <laughs> we don't recommend you try this manoeuvre, but this is how I did it. Dump the clutch as you bring up whatever rails you can muster. Lurch forward slowly. Crawl up the gears to 15 miles an hour. Don't see the white van until the last moment. Swerve too hard. And roll through 360 degrees onto your roof and back to your wheels. No, three wheels are definitely one short of having fun. And two wheels is a motorbike. Unless, of course, your name is Russ Swift. I mean, handbrake turns and reverse flicks, they're fine, but why on earth are you doing this? Well, uh, I'd started doing my displays using the, the, the techniques I learned in order testing with the handbrake turns and reverse spins, but uh, there was a chap round about the time when I started my displays, about 85, doing two in a truck, and I thought that would complement my displays nicely, so I spent the winter learning how to do it and uh, uh learning how many times you end up on your roof hundreds and hundreds i spent three three months on my roof till uh, i was confident enough to to do it with a brand new car and when did you last put it on your roof um uh, about 15 years ago oh, very impressive so you confident yes i i, I don't uh, push my luck i uh, and can I you do this in anything can you yes do i do 17 ton trucks and six wheel military vehicles anything and is this just a, a standard mini, Russ, that can do that? You've got to lock the differential. Because lock the front wheel. Yeah, once you go up on the two wheels, the wheel in the air takes all the drive. So that one spins, but you don't get any drive the wheel on the ground, so you very quickly roll to a halt. Yeah. So you've got to lock the differential to, to keep the momentum of the car. Uh, and only put some extra pressure in the tyres and, uh, and put some hard suspension on the stuff. How long do the tyres last for? Uh, depending on the surface, anywhere between one and three miles. Not quite burning rubber, but they wear out fast. Very, very, it's like a sanding disc, because you're on at such an angle, it, it's not rolling at all, it's, it's scuffing away at the side. Now obviously, uh, we don't just get on two wheels um, by throwing it up there, we use this ramp. Now, um, just stop it, you set this ramp, but does it have to be a different height for different vehicles? Yes, it'll depend on the angle that the car balances at and... Uh, and, and, and the, the track of the car, if it's a, if it's a wider car, you need a higher ramp. It looks a bit big for him. Are you sure I have been raised up? Don't worry. Talk me through it. Then. Let's go up again. Okay. But I mean, is, is the speed very critical on this? Yes, if you go up too fast, it'll just throw you straight onto its roof. If you, if you uh, go up too slow, um, you'll probably just drop off the end. But uh, I like to have quite a high ramp, so it gets me very close to the point of balance. But uh, do, you, do you have to throttle me like yeah, this? Yeah, I like to triangulate myself across the car so that yeah. I, I, I keep myself very rigid in the car. It's not very so comfortable, you know, where I am. Well, you're the least oh, of problems. I've done it once before. I'm never sure you're going to get this right. Well, no, we do. It's about to 10 miles an hour. And... But is it that first critical moment, yeah, the tricky yeah, bit? Yeah, it is, yes. Yeah. So you get stabilised, and then it's just like riding a bike. <laughs> yeah, bikes fall over a lot when I ride them. Thank you. And you can do all this all day long. Yes, yes, you can go around. Have you done a long circle. distance record at all, or is it the tyres? No, we do. It's the tyres that fall. It's very difficult to get one about three miles out with a, a set of tyres. Russ Swift on two wheels. Now I've, I've got used to it. Now I mean, it's a bit boring just in a straight line. Can you do anything else? Yeah, we'll uh, do a slalom around these cars if you like. Or uh... are you sure? Yeah, should we? No, that's, no, that's my BMW oh, up oh, there. Oh. Um, Oh, Russ. Russ. Are you sure this is going to last? Oh, Russ, watch out. That's my BMW there.
so that's the two-wheel slalom. Any other little stunts you have in mind? Well, it's nice to go through a, a fairly tight gap. There's a couple well, of cars gap. here. Oh, how about no, 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 going through here? Is that, is no. That... Back down on Earth. I'm not only happier when I've got four wheels on the ground, but I can wreck more rubber when I've got four wheel drive. Mitsubishi Evo 6, the road-going version of Tommy Mackinnon's World Championship-dominating Mitsubishi Lancer. It's 31,000 pounds, 280 horsepower, four-wheel drive, hunky-looking exterior and hunky horsepower. slides are similar to the front wheel drive in technique, but with more power and four wheel drive you can light up all four tyres. Turn the wrong way, then the right way, create the oversteer and now hammer the accelerator to the floor. Power slide and watch that rubber burn. Down to a tight left hand corner, you brake, flick it right, flick it left, nail the throttle, take the lock off, have another gear. Great power, great handling. And four wheel power slides. The rally fans dream car. And on to the super. 
Subaru Impreza P1. Richard Burns' his favourite road car. The English rally star who loves to win rallies in a car that looks just like this. And that's part of these rally cars appeal. You do look like you are Richard Burns. You can even pretend to drive a bit like Richard Burns. If only I could. wonderful sensation. Again, 280 horsepower from a turbocharged engine thrusting you up the runway. 120, 125, 130, fifth gear, 135, the acceleration just seems to go on and on. You're always sitting behind that wonderful power bulge in front of you, the real Subaru trademark. brakes again these rally bred cars have these brakes and you can swing it one way and the other rally style watch the slope pouring off those front tires oh this sort of car brings a smile to my face every day the third of our supercars and once again it comes from Japan this is the Nissan Skyline GTR and once again it's got 280 horsepower funny that isn't it well it is funny until you learn that the Japanese maximum power for production road car is you've guessed 280 horsepower What they each actually produce is open to a lot of debate. Some say as much as 350. And of course, you can always do your own chip. And then apparently this Skyline can produce something like 800 horsepower. The Skyline has perhaps got the most advanced four-wheel drive system of them all. It's basically rear-wheel drive when you start to turn into a corner, but when the back steps out, the drive is transferred to the front, and it kind of, like, helps you sort things out. Well, most of the time, anyway. meter as one of the displays on this computer so you can fling it into the corner and then tell your mates that you just pulled oh 1g mega grand more than the two rally lookalikes. And it's just up to you to decide whether that's worth it.
finally, the most powerful of our four four-wheel drive beasts. With 414 horsepower. The Porsche 911 Turbo. most expensive at £86,000, but you can instantly feel the quality, feel the power. 97, 104, acceleration goes on and on, 125, 130, 145, 150, 152, a brilliant runway, oh, oh. I love this car, I love this car. And of course, Porsche these days are very responsible, so they've got these huge stability management control which puts on brakes and takes the throttle away as soon as you get the car out of shape. But because they're a racing pedigree manufacturer, they also supply a little switch where you can take it off. Now, burn rubber. switched off, it's still not that easy to get this 911 out of shape. You've got to give it some serious grief. Constant acceleration, flick it down to second, listen to that engine. No, it's not going to go sideways for me this time, but then I give it that 400 horsepower, and we're well out of shape. into this bottom turn, flick it down to second gear, turn a little bit the wrong way than the right, get that rear end going, now drift it with the power, power slide, power slide, power slide. There you go. Up to this tight hairpin again, the little trick of flicking it the wrong way, then the right way. Now we're all oh, we overdone it. Mitsubishi Evo 6. The Subaru Impreza P1. The Nissan Skyline GTR. And the Porsche 911 Turbo. Which one would I take home? None of them. I've shredded all the tyres. Now, Russ Swift doesn't just confine his stunts to balletic movements and two-wheel driving. He also breaks... <laughs> ..records. Now, tell me, Russ, what's all this about record-breaking? That manoeuvre you've just done, you call that parallel parking and you hold the world record. What's that? Uh, the record is parking in a space that's 33 centimetres longer than the car. How long is which that? Which is... It gives you about six and a half inches at either end. Six inches each end? Yeah. yeah. Well, you, we've got about 20 here. Um, Come on, you can do better. Okay. I'll, move it, I'll move it forward right. for you, Russ. How, how near would you like it? Uh, whose car is it? It's not mine. <laughs> Come on. All right? Come on. Come on. Come on. OK, so right. I'll do it. OK, I'll stay here. You go and do it. OK. I think he can do a bit better than that. Maybe we'll see a new 
record set now. Russ's second world record is doing a reverse flick between a gap just 1.7 metres wider than the length of his car. And when Russ has finished breaking records and doing his displays, he packs up and heads home in his own mobile car park. Whilst most of my fun nowadays is had power sliding road cars around racetracks, I still haven't quite given up being a professional racing driver. Welcome to my office. Come inside. It's not the easiest of cars to get into, but once in, you're firmly held in this deep racing bucket seat. The steering wheel very close. With heavy steering, you need the leverage from your arms to turn when the grip builds up on these slick racing tyres. Three buttons on the steering wheel, one for the radio communication, one for a drink, because you get very, very thirsty in this cockpit that can get up to 50, 60 degrees centigrade when you're racing. And the third one, to change the page on this liquid display dashboard you have in front of you. Tiny little dash. When you're racing, you've got the rev counter, water temperature, oil temperature, and that's just about all you need when you're racing. Down here, you've got the gear lever right beside you. It's a sequential pump action. You pull it back to go up a gear, six-speed gearbox, crash through them, the racing gears, and then you push it down to change down a gear. In the middle, you've got this instrument panel. The sort of auxiliaries here to the right, these switches, indicators, wipers, wind screen heaters to demist, rain lights and fog lights and headlights. And you've got to know exactly where each switch is, because when you're ploughing through the rain at Le Mans at 200 miles an hour in the dark, you cannot take your eyes off the road ahead for a minute, so you need to know exactly where each switch is. Then down to the left, there's the engine controls, and they all have to be switched on to fire up this wonderful V12 engine. Ignition, scavenge pumps, fuel pressure pumps, and that little button. Put your fingers in your ears. Engage first gear. Build up the ribs.
prefer that. The only problem with the Lister Storm is that it's all over too soon. So why don't we have another blast down the runway? Donuts performed in exactly the same way as the earlier ones. The only problem is that you've got huge racing slicks which quickly heat up and grip like glue. Fortunately, you've also got 700 horsepower to break that traction and tear the rubber off. Let's see it one last time. Rubber burn. Oh, maybe you shouldn't. Have you got any more tires, please? Oh, well. I suppose there's only one way I'm going to be getting home tonight. I think I'll put my helmet on this time. Fluffy.
What you really want is a load of horsepower, a locked differential, limited slip locked bollocks, sorry. Q, the best handling car in the business, the BMW M Roadster. Ah, oh, yeah. It's cool halfway in then. And now it's donut time in a Lister storm. Just put on the lock, bring in the revs. Looks a bit high for a mini to me there. Um, I was going to say Tom, I saw Tom, I was going to say Tom. I bet it won't go over, it always lulled before the storm. Did you get it? <laughs> Is that good for her souls? <laughs> So that's the basics. And now I'd like to introduce you to someone who's put those movements together into something of an art form. A form of also does change so, yeah. Yeah, love that. Was that good for you, that one, Bobby? Radio on, I hate radios. I, I can't see. I have no see. idea how you turn it off.